<laughs> All right, so I am Evelyn Steglick. I am the acting seat modeling team leader, and uh, I'll just be sharing some information that we have gathered through the C4 and C2 surveys regarding manure um, and um, what are what those applications um, have done as far as environmental impacts. Okay, so this map shows where the areas of significant recoverable manure production in terms of tons of nitrogen produced are located. Um, we're considering the areas in kind of light orange and dark orange to be the si significant production areas. And when I say recoverable, I'm referring to manure that can be scraped up or caught in lagoons to be applied to other fields. Non-recoverable, on the other hand, refers to manure deposited by livestock and pastures, and so it cannot be easily uh, collected to be used on other fields. Um, we are assuming that the greatest manure application uh, would be occurring in these areas as well, since producers are probably not transporting the manure long distances. This next map shows where the SEEP2 sampling actually occurred. We had just under 1,300 sample points for SEEP2 uh, that were reported actually using manure as a nutrient source. Um, and those points represented almost 31 million acres. Um, for the most part, we obtained survey data from the majority of the significant manure production areas, but there are a few locations we could improve our sampling. Um, this area in the Oklahoma, Texas, uh, Arkansas, Louisiana area, the, that could have been, we could, would be nice if we had a few more points there. Uh, there's a few other areas up, even up into um, Oregon and Idaho, and it would also be nice to have a few more points um, there in the California area. So for seat three, which we are already discussing uh, seat three, uh, we are taking into consideration these higher manure production areas and asking for greater sampling in those hucks, um, not just only to get a better representation of the manure acres, but also to hopefully enable us to be able to provide summarizations at maybe a finer scale than just the production region based on more st statistically sound data. Um, and then also, like Lee talked about, uh, maintaining that producer confidentiality, because that is very, very important for us. Uh, I won't really go over this because Lee kind of already touched on this as far as what type of manure data we collect. Um, so when we look at the acres with manure application, the North Central and Mid Midwest region remain the number one region uh, in terms of total acres. However, in terms of the percent of cropland acres in the region, the Northeast region applies nearly uh, applies manure to nearly 40% of their cropland acres. Um, also between those two time periods, we saw a fairly decent increase in the percent of acres receiving manure in the Atlantic and Gulf Coast uh, coastal plains, the California coastal region, East Central, and even in the Southwest region. By looking at manure source, uh, beef cattle, dairy cattle, poultry and swine remained our big players um, in both surveys. However, we saw um, the poultry usage actually doubled by seep 2 um, When we look at the average annual applied for nitrogen and phosphorus, the biosolids application rate decreased uh, to almost half the rate that was in seep 2 uh, And on the other hand, uh, the other manures, which is like horse, goats, sheep, um, those application rates doubled. Uh, we also saw a slight incline in the beef and swine um, average annual rates for nitrogen per acre. Uh, and here again, Lee kind of talked about uh, as far as where the manure is obtained, um, what those options are for the farmers to answer. Uh, most of our farmers reported that they got their manure directly from their own operation. Uh, interestingly, though, the number of acres where manure was purchased nearly quadrupled by seep 2 uh, So that's showing that there is a market for manures and that producers have realized manures are worth paying for to get those added benefits from them. 
Uh, we also asked, like Lee said, we asked about whether producers do manure and soil testing before applying nutrients. Uh, in SEEP 1, the percent of acres doing manure testing was fairly small. Uh, most of them were, you know, 20% um, of the manured acres or less. Uh, however, by SEEP 2, most of the regions, um, at least 50% of the acres or near 50% or more of the acres um, were getting manure tested. Um, we also made good strides with some of the regions with the soil testing. Um, and uh, some of those regions in SEEP 1 that were, you know, right around the 50% mark, 50% of the acres being soil tested. Uh, by SEEP 2, we were up into the you know, 80, 90% of them being soil tested. Um, so it appears that producers are realizing the importance of testing to inform their nutrient application needs. When we look at the average annual NMP application rates between acres with and without tests, uh, in SEEP 1, we really didn't see much difference um, as far as what those uh, between the two categories. Um, but by SEEP 2, it was apparent that manure testing was definitely causing producers to decrease their application rates. Uh, for both NMP applications, rates decreased at least 10 pounds per acre with the manure testing. So that's good news um, that they are keeping those, keeping that in consideration and adjusting their application rates accordingly. When we compare manure to commercial fertilizer applications, we don't see a lot of change in the number of acres that apply manure only or those that apply manure with or without commercial fertilizer. Uh, we did see a drop in acres that applied commercial in without manure um, and an increase in acres that applied commercial P without manure. Um, but still overall commercial fertilizers are remaining our biggest source of nutrients. Um, so we have room to grow with manure. This next slide is one that brings up some questions for us. Uh, this slide shows the average annual amount of nitrogen and phosphorus applied either through manure only applications, commercial fertilizer only applications or a combination of the two. Now, interestingly, um, when you look at the acres that had the combo versus the commercial only, um, they were applying nearly as much in, in the manure as they were if they were only applying commercial um, in. <clears throat> Yet they went and added, even with that amount, they still added another 63 pounds um, of N on top of what they had already applied through the manure. Uh, when we look at phosphorus, it's even worse. Um, they were actually, through the manure, they were applying 10 pounds more than if they applied through the commercial fertilizer only, um, but then they still added another eight pounds of commercial fertilizer on top of the manure. Um, so, one of the SEEP team's biggest curiosities is why are producers adding so much more commercial fertilizer to acres that already received the majority of their needed nutrients from manure? Um, you know, they've got basically with nitrogen, they were only applying five pounds less with, the, with manure applications than with commercial only. Um, and then they added these extra pounds of nitrogen through commercial fertilizer. So they were applying 58 pounds more in than if they would have only applied commercial fertilizer. So we're kind of curious what's going on here. Are they running out of room to store the manure and just applying it to get rid of it? Um, are they afraid that not enough nutrients are actually gonna be available to the crop from the manure? And so they want to make sure that extra commercial fertilizer is there to ensure that they get those yields. Um, it's just something the SEEP team would, you know, we'd really love to hear from farmers and find out what's going on in their minds. And you know, maybe that's some technical assistance that we need to provide um, for that regard. Um, this slide shows the average annual pounds of nitrogen applied and lost per acre across the seed production regions for acres uh, with either no manure applied or those that had manure applied. So the acres uh, with no manure added are the uh, bars in blue, 
and the bars in green are the ones that had manure applied. Um, now the loss um, values, uh, those are actually coming from APEX simulations, so those are modeled results. Um, but one of the things to notice is that as a percentage of applied pounds, the acres with manure applied actually lose less uh, than the acres with no manure applied. But if we look at the actual pounds per acre lost, manure acres are definitely losing more nitrogen across all the regions, but the manured acres are also receiving a good bit more nitrogen per acre. This slide shows basically the same information for phosphorus, um, but for more than half of the regions, manured acres um, are not only losing more as a percentage of the um, applied pounds of P, but also losing more actual pounds of P. Uh, for several of the regions, the manured acres are applying more than four times the amount of P being added to non-manured acres. So if you look at the, the Northern Plains, the Northwest and the Southwest regions, they're applying huge amounts more um, through manure than if they were just, um, if these were not manured acres. Interestingly, those aren't even um, areas that we consider to be high manure production areas. So I suppose they are bringing that manure in from somewhere. Finally, uh, we just look at the comparison of crop acreage that is receiving and not receiving manure. Uh, the three crops that really jump out to me in terms of uh, having large differences are the alfalfa and clover crops, uh, silage and hay, and cotton. Um, for the alfalfa and clover, it, it didn't even make the top 10 crops that um, didn't have manure applied. So obviously a large percentage of, of the alfalfa clover acres are receiving their nutrients from manure. Uh, the silage and hay, that makes up nearly a fifth of the acres in the top 10 crops that receive manure. Um, and cotton also did not show up in the crops that receive manure. So it, it, um, those acres tend to be receiving most of their nutrients from commercial fertilizer. So just some key points um, that I want to make is that we did see a large increase in acres with purchased manure, indicating there is a market for manure and producers are realizing the benefits manure provides. Um, also, manure testing tends to reduce total application rates. We saw at least 10 pounds per acre drop for acres with manure tests. Um, of the total N and P applied to manured acres, 45% of N and 22% of P applied to those acres actually came from commercial fertilizers, leading to total rates nearly double that of the commercial fertilizer only acres. Um, nitrogen and phosphorus rates on manured acres far exceed those of commercial fertilized only acres. Um, so that's actually indicating that the, the higher soil testing rates are not leading to improved rate management. Um, so basically producers need to have an improved understanding of the availability of um, manure nutrients in order to improve their nutrient use efficiency, to help reduce losses, and to reduce input costs from commercial sor sources. So with the increase in manure usage on cropland fields, as evident from the increase in manure acres from seep one to seep two, NRCS understands the importance of being able to provide producers with technical guidance on how to properly apply manure to ensure producers are not causing more problems in terms of water quality through their manure application. Um, the big problem though with this is that very little field research is available that addresses the resource concerns of nutrient losses, contaminants, and pathogens from manure applications. So to help answer this question, the NRCS SEAT team is collaborating with Texas A&M AgriLife researchers in Stephenville and Temple, Texas to help develop conservation practices that can address these resource concerns and provide valuable information for producers using manure on their cropland. 